It's, it, I doubt that uh, that will happen here. Okay, so anyway, all right. Chris Sadler is a representative of SG1 Sports. I'm Marky e. Bilson. This is Tri City Sports Now. SG1 Sports, you can find them a lot on YouTube. You can find them a lot uh, doing a lot of simulations, uh, previewing the upcoming football season. They made a lot of news last month. In fact, uh, Patrick Brown uh, wrote a story about this after they simulated around SEC Media Days how the various SEC teams would do with a computer game, or shall I say a video game, but this is the interesting thing. They used NCAA Football 14, and of course it's 2019. Now, Chris, I do know why you use that game, because there hasn't been a college football video game since then, thanks to the Ed O'Bannon case, and what I would consider is the NCAA's ridiculous pig-headedness on this entire thing, or for that matter, why EA Sports wouldn't just put coaches on the cover of their video games if it was that big of a deal as well. But I do want to ask you here, how does SG1 do a simulation for 2019 on a 2014 video game? Well, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. You just update the rosters. Uh, the game allows you to update the players' names, their appearance, their ratings, and uh, you can do that. And uh, we did a lot of the, the ratings ourselves, especially for the SEC team. And in some of our simulations, actually, i got to give, give a little credit to a group uh, that, that put these rosters together. They have a, a, a thread on operationsports.com where they uh, do the rosters. There's a group of, I think, about 10 guys, and they do these. But um, for me personally, uh, and I, again, I did most of the SEC schools, uh, I based it off of stats from last year, also from uh, the players' recruiting rankings, from ratings from 24-7 sports, uh, and any information I could find online about 40 times you know, to, to gauge speed and things like that. And uh, you just update the players and, and plug them into the game. And it's not perfect, but it's fun to do, and uh, it's fun to see how it turns out. And it sounds like you really made a commitment to educate yourself and try to be objective on the ratings, but ultimately it is your opinion based on the information that you received, even though what you just told us, Chris, was that it was quite exhaustive. Now, uh, but it does remind me, I used to do things like this with my own gaming, with sports gaming, and uh, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you what it is, but because it's so old-fashioned. I mean, we're talking about the floppy disk era, but uh, Micro League Baseball. And yeah, there was a question, how do you rate these guys? Because you could rate, when you punched in like you did here in the 2014 game, the 2019 players, I remember saying, how would you uh, evaluate a certain player because I remember there was one second baseman, for instance, who said he didn't have much range, but he was absolutely sure-handed. He set a record for fewest errors in a season. And so how does that come about as, you know, fielding range one or fielding rating one through five? How do you do that and all this? I want to ask you then, again, what do you weight the most up? Would it be, say, 40 times that you would read for speed? Or would it be something else like, let's say, for a receiver, yards per catch? Uh, yeah, so uh, you, you get a base rating based off of their recruiting. Rating. So, you know, 24-7 sports, they have a rating for every player. Sure. Now, to just plug that in, you get a base rating. Uh, and for freshman players that haven't played, that's kind of what you go with. And then, again, adjust the speed based off of uh, 40 times and things like that. But I'd say for a quarterback, the higher completion percentage, the higher their pass accuracy is going to be. Uh, for a receiver, their yards per game, the higher yards per game, the higher their catching rating is going to be. So uh, things like that. All right, now you have uh, put the Vols in. Now, you don't have, uh, you know, a simulation for, say, the Georgia State game. That's just, you know, no. not there. Or Chattanooga. It's very difficult to uh, make those, uh, you know, ratings and all this. But you do have nine of the opponents for Tennessee. And uh, assuming victories, therefore, uh, against the likes of Chattanooga, Georgia State, and uh, also... UAB, you have the Tennessee Volunteers going five and seven. 
But I kind of found this to be a little bit interesting because, for instance, you have the Vols uh, beating Missouri really badly by 24 points, but then losing to the likes of, say, Vanderbilt in overtime, uh, playing Alabama extremely competitively, only losing by three points, but then losing to South Carolina, and taking Florida into overtime. So I, I just wanted to ask you here, I mean, a little bit, what about this? Are you punching in the strategy yourself when you're doing the simulation? Are you having the computer do it? How does this work? Yeah, now that's one thing. Uh, now you can you can adjust the playbooks to to best suit the uh, the team. For example, uh, I use Georgia's playbook for mm -hmm. Tennessee because Jim Chaney was at Georgia at the time. All right, that's and, uh, that's legitimate. So that's the playbook that was used, and you can set uh, for the coaches. You can set run and pass percentages. Uh, so coaches that pass the ball more, you can set it to where they're going to pass more and run more. Uh, you can set their aggressiveness and conservative. Uh, you can adjust that so coaches that are more aggressive. So for Tennessee, offensively, you know they're going to be set to be a little bit more conservative. Yes, uh, definitely what they they've done. And um, so there are some things, and then once you you put that in, it, it's the computer from there. And it sometimes can can be a little bit random. I mean, like I said, it's not perfect. It's it's really more for fun. Uh, but we have had some success with these in the past. Um, Back, I think three years ago, uh, in 2000 and, or 2016, when Clemson won the national championship, our simulation actually picked Clemson to win the national championship. Okay. Um, so it's it's had some success, and then there's been some other things that have been way off. Uh, but you mentioned that about Tennessee. Actually, all of their losses in our simulation were one possession losses. They did not lose to anybody by more than eight points, and so. They did go five and seven, but seeing them being that competitive, I think uh, that's got to be a good sign for Tennessee fans. No, well, let me ask this. I mean, Missouri, I'm wondering uh, if you're punching in the stats for them and such, and that was a game that you had the Vols winning. Hey, look, you got to kick it off. I mean, yeah, it is possible you can beat Missouri and lose to Kentucky like you've got here. I mean, you know, I, I, do, I get that, you know, and all this. But uh, just going by this, would it have been hampered the Missouri rating because Kelly Bryant uh, did not play for the Tigers last year, I played for the Clemson Tigers, didn't play for the Missouri Tigers, but he also only played, what, four games or so. So how do you type in Bryant's stats? Well, we actually would go back uh, two years when he was a full-time starter. All right. Where, that's where his stats came from. And, yeah, I mean, some, sometimes things like that just happen. Missouri was 7-5. and five. They beat Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, Kentucky, West Virginia. So they weren't bad. Uh, it just, sometimes it just goes that way. Tennessee beat Auburn last year, right? I mean, you know, that's the right, sort of thing. Exactly. I am kind of curious, though. I mean, Tennessee fans, although perhaps not recently against Vanderbilt, they're used to beating, uh, seeing their team. I should not say the fans don't play the game, obviously. But uh, Kentucky and Vanderbilt are two teams that, generally speaking, Tennessee fans have grown up watching the Volunteers beat with great consistency. However, look, let's face it. I mean, Tennessee has won fewer games the last two years than Kentucky did just last year alone. So I want to ask, what records did you have Kentucky and Vanderbilt having this year? Uh, because you did have, you mentioned uh, Missouri was 7-5. and five. What do you have Kentucky and Vandy? Uh, let's see, Kentucky I had 7-5. Okay. Uh, they beat Mississippi State, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt in the SEC. Uh, and Vanderbilt was 5-7. and seven. All right. They, they're home to the SEC wins against Tennessee. Okay, and I can, you know, again, I mean, it, you'd think that maybe if they had the bowl game to play for or something, maybe a little bit more, but yeah, there's there, there's a lot of distaste there. So, yes, I mean, you know, keeping uh, traditional live even in Neyland Stadium, all right, you know, it's theoretically possible, and you had it in overtime anyhow. Uh, we're talking to you, uh, the boys from SG1 Sports. You can watch, I mean, type in SG1 Sports on YouTube. You'll see their previews and their simulations for many, many, many different teams, both college and pro. But I want to ask, uh, then, who wins the national championship in the SG1 Sports simulation? Well, we will find that out on Monday night, actually. Uh, okay. We're going to have our playoff simulation coming up this Saturday. And then we will have a, a national championship on Monday, and these will be a live premieres, so you can watch them live on the channel. And, and there's a chat there; people can talk to each other as they watch the game. Something we're doing. Uh, so that is still to be determined. The playoff teams are Michigan, Georgia, Alabama, and Clemson. All right.
right? So you like what Shea Patterson could do at Michigan. Intriguing, I can see it. I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility by any means, and I think that those are four legit. You know, you didn't have suddenly, oh, look, Rice is in it. I, I get it, okay? You know, that sort of thing. All right. Uh, but let's just ask then this. Uh, did you Have you done the NFL season so far? I know you've done some previews on YouTube. Who's going to win the uh, AFC North, this sort of thing. Uh, what about the pros? Where are you at right there? Now, there you go. That we don't see. Yes. Okay. So, somebody is looking for a long shot bet. The Carolina Panthers, you have just said, could be uh, a team that might uh, be of uh, interest here. I'm talking to uh, the guys from SG1 Sports. They do a simulation. It's on EA Sports Old Game, but they have uh, typed in the uh, stats, and we've heard uh, how they've done it here. Uh, for this upcoming season and simulated it. It's not such good news for Tennessee, but we'll find out about some other teams. Can you stay with me through the uh, next break? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's do that. And after that, we'll talk to Vito Stolino about who is going to win the Super Bowl, in his opinion, on Tri-City Sports Now. <laughs> 